Hey guys, thanks for checking out the video. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I do my edits step by step and what stuff I use. So yeah, stick tuned for that. And before I start, you no know, 1% of you are subscribed to the channel. So consider hitting that subscribe, that like, you know, as it helps support the channel. Thanks, and yeah, let's get right into it. Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Now let's get started on editing this picture. And right here we have Sandra, you know, took these shots like a week ago from today. So what we want to do first is do some mild edits right here. And we want to work on perhaps the exposure, which this is already well shot. I perfectly worked with the lighting at my place using the Manny Ortiz Beauty Dish. And there isn't much exposure to fix here. Um, but we're really going to bring down some of the highlights here. Increase some of the whites so we can bring a little bit more of her skin into the shot. And perhaps work on the contrast. Put it 15. A lot of new people like to go well off with the contrast. We call it the Instagram filter where everything is super contrasty. But we don't want to do that. We don't want to overwhelm it with contrast. Now here is the texture and yeah, sorry if there's noise in the background, you know, people live here too. We're going to put 15 for the texture and probably 10 for the vibrance. We don't want to overly vibrate or put too much vibrance because then we can overwhelm the picture with too much colors, make it too saturated, which is not what, we, not what we want to do. And this is the before, and this is what we got so far. We are slowly crafting it there, and this is where I'm gonna cut in with my special commercial break. This little commercial break is brought to you by my preset pack, the Daring Shots Preset Pack 1. So yeah, this preset pack includes about more than 10 presets, and it's available on my website. These things can get you a head start on your workflow so you don't have to think about the color grading aspect of Lightroom. You can always play around with them and you know, check them out. They're a lot of fun. I think they're worth the $10. And yeah, it really helps support this channel and my livelihood. Thank you. All right, so we have some presets here and it's up to you if you want to use presets. Usually, you would want to apply the preset beforehand or after. It really depends on you. Some presets are made for you to start out, put them before, and then craft the picture from there. Or if you already have your adjustments done, you can just put a filter and it should work. Mine are kind of built for midway. You can do it before or after. It's up to you. So we have Aquatic Slumber, which, eh. Not working for this picture, could work for another one. Beauty and the Beast, which is a lot of yellow and orange color grading. Bobby Tarantino, Clarity Song, Clear Symphony, Copper Past, Daydream Sunrise, Falling Leaves, Golden Hour, Melancholy Hill, Mexico Film, Mountain View, Movie Scene, Old Streets, Sourhead, Stone Ocean, the Walking Bad, Vanilla Ice, Watermelon Sugar. So I'm going to want to go with Clear Symphony on this one just because I like how soft the colors are here. Not too, too rough. So yeah, and that's pretty much it. You guys can check these presets in the description. Go to my website, buy them. It's only $10. And yeah, these are the color grading things. We added a little bit of an orange mid-tone, some blue shadows, and some yellow highlights. Yeah. And here's the calibration settings. So yeah, now let's take this bad boy into Photoshop and see what I do with it. Right, now I'm gonna click here, edit in Adobe Photoshop 2022. All right. Now we have it here in Adobe Photoshop. And I'm using the Eli Infante actions. Um, I'll explain what, e act, what <laughs> I'll explain what each action does and what it's doing to the picture overall. I'll also link down his action pre action preset pack in the description so you guys can give that some support. And you know, yeah. 
I'm going to click these, this F5 D8 skin retouching 2021 action and I'm going to do it 18 pixels. What it's doing, it's basically separating the colors into different textures. It's making a texture layer so I can just play with the texture of the skin and the colors of the skin separately. So now it's doing its thing and we give it some time. All right, and it gave me a black and white layer and I'm just gonna take that off. So what I wanna do first is go into the texture layer down here and with command plus I can zoom in here, hold the space bar and it lets you drag yourself, okay. Control. All right, and I wanna look for some acne that I can get rid of or probably some hair, single strand of hair that I can remove and we will get rid of it, all right. So I want to get rid of this right here and then I'm going to get rid of this right here. I'm sorry if it's a mole, Sandra. I am just going to get rid of it right then and there. I'm not going to risk it. And yeah, we can get rid of this right here and then do that. Do this. Okay. All right, I can also do that over there actually, if I am committed enough to this. Usually I skip the hairs, but I'm trying to get myself into a rhythm where I don't try to skip them. All right, All right. we have one right here that I wanna get rid of. Let's get rid of this blemish. This right here too. All right, and yeah, we're done with that part. So now we're gonna move on to the brush section so what, what you want to do for this section you can just make a normal layer but I'm just gonna sample out one color from the skin and basically only match that skin so we don't have too many colors lying around in the skin and yeah we're gonna basically paint brush over this my flow is at four percent so we don't shoot a single streak of color there okay okay and then we're gonna do some over here, some up here, right? And I don't wanna throw myself too much into the dark area here or else it'll make it look super weird, okay? It's kinda like applying makeup, but in Photoshop. So now we're gonna go to the opacity down here in the bottom right corner, and we're gonna drag it down to 68. Actually 50, 55% is good. Yeah, as you can see, this is what we did. And now, actually, we're gonna go to the lips and also make them a single color. Okay. Okay. Now, keep in mind, this is my style, so if you guys really don't wanna do this, it's up to you, but this is what I'm teaching you. All right, now that we got that, we're gonna move on to this different area. Um, it's called Global Check, and basically it's showing me the brightest parts of the picture where the light hit the most. All right, and as we can see, it was both the cheeks and part of the nose here, the lips. There's some part over here which I'm also gonna work on and then the forehead as well. And yeah, so I'm not gonna play around with it too much so I can teach you guys how I do my dodge and burn. So I'm just gonna turn this off and I'm just gonna leave this black and white layer so we can see the picture in black and white. And I'm gonna do go down here to my dodge and burn layers and play with it. So dodge brightens up the picture. It's working with the highlights you get to choose a part of the picture that you want to make brighter specific. You can do the cheeks, the chin, the forehead, the nose. It's up to you, but I'm going to show you what I like to make brighter here. So I'm going to make her cheeks here a bit brighter. And you know, again, the flow is at 4%, so we aren't overwhelming, overwhelming the picture too much. 
So we're going to do that here. We're going to write in these up here too. Okay. And then we're going to go down here, you know, this upper area here. We can also make this brighter. And then here too. So, and her chin as well. We want to make that chin brighter. Okay. Okay, and her nose right here. I'm going to be very careful to only make this part of the nose very bright. Okay. And then we're going to work on the forehead here. And then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to turn off my black and white layers. And I'm actually going to go down here and play a little bit with her neck. Make that part brighter as well. Okay. And then we're going to go to burn and start darkening a bit around where the highlights were. Burn is making stuff darker. And what I'm going to choose to do is burn around the brightness so we can add a little bit of a dynamic difference between the dodge and the burn. So let's do that. Okay. As you can see, her cheek right here, that's where the, the dodge was. So we're going to do around it. Sorry, my dog is crying. Okay. And then I'm going to, we're going to apply this burn. Sometimes you like to do it under the chin so we can separate the jaw and the neck. That way it doesn't look like a double chin. So keep that in mind as we go forth. And then we're going to also do it around the nose. This is why I wanted to be very careful when I was putting dodge on the nose so that I wouldn't make the whole part of the nose bright. I want to only do this part and burn this side of the nose so we can at a dynamic difference between it. All right. And then let's go over here and separate some of it from the forehead. Okay. And then we're going to add this here. Okay. And then we're going to go down here to the arms. And then we're going to add some dodge to the hands as well okay and this part you can eyeball it you know just go with what you think is right here but remember to add that dynamic difference which is what I'm going to do here there we go okay okay and then my dog is right there too wow okay so yeah, now after this, here is the before and the after. So this is before and this is after. So we don't want to add, obviously, all of the dodge and burn. So we can go to the opacity by clicking the folder and going down to 60%. That way it doesn't look like too much was done. We, we, when we're retouching, we don't want to make it seem like we retouched it, if that makes sense. We want to make it look good but not obvious that it was photoshopped. Okay, so with that done, we can now move on to the eyes. And again, this is just another basic um, dodge layer. And yeah. So we're just gonna go here and brighten up these eyes a bit, you know? Okay. I think she has contacts on, which is why they look extra shiny. Okay. And then we're going to go to 769%, you know, so it doesn't look too out there. All right. And then we're going to move on to some extra declutter in the picture. So I'm going to go to my texture and select these things right here so we can get rid of them from the picture. So we're going to grab the patch tool and then we're just going to 
cut some stuff here, you know. We don't want this in the image. So we're just going to cut it from the image here. Right. It's kind of hard since we're not it's kind of difficult since we don't have too much um, stuff to patch in here. It might look weird at first, but let's see how it turns out. And if not, we can always add more adjustments to it. But now that we have that, we can move on to our color backup layer here. And then we're going to actually yeah, do this. It might look a little weird, but we can make it work. We can make it work. A lot of this takes patience, and we need to have that patience. All right. Okay. So we can make it look better, way better, actually. Um, just gonna grab some of this. We're going to go back to texture up here and copy some of this over here. Okay, and then we're going to grab this. We're going to copy this over here. Okay. Sorry, my dog is being rude. He will be returned to the pound immediately. All right. So yeah, this is what it's going to look like. Um, it's the best I can do for the moment without taking three hours to figure out what I can do to make it better. So we're just going to copy some of this right here, some of this color, and start basically singling it out, you know, making it seem similar. All right, and if we press the brush button, this is, it's better. It's better and I feel like it's not noticeable unless you point it out, which is also a lot of what we have to tell ourselves when we're doing these things is that it may look iffy to us and sure you can fix it and try to make it better, something that you're, you can be proud of, but most of the time it's just our little critic mind, you know, toying with us. So let's not let it take advantage of us. So. Yeah, let's do the same here and make it seem like there's nothing ever here. I don't know why my dog likes to have his toys all around the house. He thinks he owns it, but he doesn't. All right. And then we're going to go back, take some texture off it. We're pretty much done with the image, but you always want to make some final adjustments to it. Alright, yeah, alright, so this is the image we ended up with, and now let's see the before and the after, so this is the before, and this is the after, obviously it wasn't too much of a difference, but unless you zoom in and you look deeply into it, there was a huge difference. But again, we don't want to make it look like we were there, that we used Photoshop on it, because then that really takes away from the picture, I guess. People can point it out, probably make fun of it. So yeah, your goal as a retoucher is to stay unseen and make it seem like you were never there. So yeah, now that we're done with it, we're going to save as a copy and go over here. Um, I like to keep my stuff and in different folders here so yeah we're just gonna put it here if you saw that Alexis folder I swear to God <laughs> just name it something and call it uh, Sandra edit 299 or 2099 whatever save it for as big as you want to um, usually keeping it around 5 6 yeah sure whatever I like to keep it at 10 to keep a lot of the data in in case you're sending it to a client and then yeah you're done with that and then you can move on to your next image woohoo welcome to the life of a photographer and yeah that's pretty much it for this video 
Um, if you guys liked it, then feel free to subscribe and all that stuff. Check out the presets in the description as it helps support this channel, my living conditions, and all that stuff. So yeah, I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.